let's start uh, from the motivation. I, I believe it's extremely important to underline that we have one planet, we have limited resources that is well known from the old story, uh, but I want to point out how important is the energy related topics with the uh, uh, with every processes. So we have already faced the end of the cheap oil because we're putting more and more energy to extract today oil than in the past. In the past, with the energy of one barrel of oil, it was possible to extract 100 barrels of oil. Today, the ratio is more one to 10 as in every situation. And what is extremely important to think about when we talk about sustainability is the periodic table, but not the conventional one, more like this one here, which shows different colors for different elements where you have their abundance um, and their critical presence in the earth. Uh, so you can see uh, that, for instance, uh, you have a lot of nitrogen and oxygen. Carbon is a special situation where these different colors highlight the carbon footprint and the CO2 related problems. But if you go into details, we will discover that there are not many options to, to make materials and catalysts in a sustainable way. I don't want to, to spend too much in the introduction, but I like to emphasize that uh, the depletion we have been seen for oil is valid for all the elements. So this is the situation for gold. This was mentioned as plasmonic material many times. Um, in the past and today, much more diluted gold is found. And this translates in more energy required to extract the elements we are using to make materials and catalysts at the end. And finally, also ethical issue like for the extraction of cobalt, which has been shown to be extremely important in many, many applications. So saying that, I think we, we have to consider how to make catalysts. And I'll start from my first paper. I will go briefly, don't worry. Um, I was interested in three-way catalysis, thinking always to make a better future for our society. And at that time, heterogeneous catalysis was dominated by high loaded supported metal catalysis. So in a three-way catalyst, few grams of rhodium platinum were loaded. That's because those type of catalyst has to survive a thousand degree Celsius, very high temperature for a very long time, 160,000 kilometer, for instance. So how was possible to reduce the noble metal loading? Well, we were investigating the support effect and indeed serious zirconia was a step change in the production of this kind of uh, catalyst. And we were in collaboration with the MEL chemicals, for instance, in Manchester. Second very important step, and this is an example of a beautiful collaboration between physicists and chemists that took long time to be in place, but 20 years ago, we, more than 20 years ago, we managed to uh, observe single double surface, subsurface vacancy in cerium dioxide, which is a, redu a reducible oxide, very well investigated today in many, many applications, but that time was very important in car converters. And indeed, the role of these vacancies in catalysis and in stabilization of supported metal is extremely important. And so that's a trend that allows us to reduce the content of noble metals 
in catalysis. Another step change was an investigation in collaboration with Chris Murray UPenn, Ray Gorty UPenn, where we use well-defined nanocrystals, nickel, palladium, and platinum, and we show that for specific reaction like CO oxidation, the most active sites for this type of reaction are those at the interface and likely at the corner of this uh, supporting nanocrystals, well-defined nanocrystals. So this opened the, the way to reduce the amount of noble metals in this type of catalysis. And more recently, we pushed this further to single atom catalyst and metal-free catalysis, as I'll try to show you later on in this presentation. Uh, many important application of this single atom or metal-free uh, catalyst for CO2 reduction to solar fuels, hydrogen peroxide production, fuel cell, water splitting, and so on and so forth. So I mentioned how important is the metal support interface. And so we were deeply involved for decades in defining a new strategy to make heterogeneous catalysts Instead of supporting nanoparticles on preformed supports, we change, we reverse the way to, to prepare the catalyst. So first making protected metal nanoparticles with different approaches, and then surrounded these metal nanoparticles by a porous oxide, an inorganic stable scaffold that prevent metal sintering which is a common deactivation pathway in heterogeneous catalysis. And at the same time, we were able to maximize the meta support interface as shown in this cartoon. Uh, porosity is extremely important to allow, allow diffusion of uh, reagents and products from the surface of the material. This approach has been investigated for Different metal, different oxide, different reaction. I just mentioned a uh, few old reactions that are under investigation, uh, a renaissance in these uh, years, like preferential oxidation for purification of hydrogen. We know how much important is hydrogen as a future energy vector. And this is done by golden bed in Syria, uh, photocatalysis with copper embedded into titania, where the electron transfer is extremely important in these embedded systems uh, with ruthenium for ammonia decomposition. And the first example I want to show you is a case of palladium embedded surya, um, which is extremely important to control methane emission. Why methane? Everyone is talking about CO2 effect, global warming, uh, but methane is really uh, much more danger, has a 25 times higher effect than CO2. And people know that, for instance, this is a remote area in the United States uh, where they are burning methane in oil extraction plants to avoid this uh, dramatic uh, increase of methane in the atmosphere. Uh, but of course you have fracking, which release methane in the atmosphere, especially in the United States. You have agriculture that produce methane and so on and so forth. So the idea is to control with a, a sort of catalytic system exhausted that can release methane like diesel cars, uh, house heating system, uh, where methane is only partially burned and not fully burned. Uh, so the state-of-the-art catalyst was and still is palladium oxide. The problem with palladium oxide is the fact that the high temperature and indeed this type of catalyst reach high temperatures uh, decompose to palladium metal, uh, which is uh, much less active. And you can see from this plot uh, where lots of palladium is loaded, 
that you have no conversion at low temperature, you go up and while you decomposing palladium, oxide to palladium metal, you lose activity and the system is deactivated. Reoxidation is a kinetically hindered pro process and therefore uh, you, you need to help keeping palladium in an oxidized state. And cerium dioxide, which is uh, really uh, something we like much, is able to provide lattice oxygen to metals, keeping them in an oxidized state. And so we, we decided to use uh, our core shell type approach to make this single unit palladium embedded into a uh, different crystal of cerium dioxide. The synthesis is quite complex uh, and we supported these uh, units on modify alumina. Very relevant is the performances. You, you can appreciate the lower activity in methane conversion, much lower than the state of the art catalyst. And very important is the fact that you do not observe a deactivation at high temperature. It means the systems keep the palladium oxidized and active. And in the Arrhenius plot, you can see how much more active is the system with respect to the state of the art catalyst. These materials are very stable under ideal conditions. Um, however, reality, industrial processes are nasty. You have molecules like SO2, water, phosphate from lubricant that create huge problems to this catalyst. So you have really a deactivation in real condition, industrial condition. So we spend a lot of time trying to modify both the core and the shell. The core by making bimetallic system, platinum, palladium alloys are uh, still with uh, a sophisticated uh, synthetic approach. And the shell was replaced by Syria, which was deactivated partially by water and also phosphate, phosphates making um, cerium phosphates stable compounds uh, with Syria, zirconia, etc., etc. I mentioned the synthesis was really a synthetic, clever molecular approach with lots of solvents, organic solvents, diluted conditions. So companies were interested in, in the performances, but not, not in the way we make this um, system. So we, we try to modify keeping the synthesis, keeping the concept of protected nanoparticles. And we came out with the atomic layer deposition that was interested also for company. And by covering conventional supported material with thin layer of reducible oxide, we were able to make what we call small catalyst, smart catalyst because under redox condition, oxidizing, reducing condition, you can have X solution of the particles from the bulk to the surface or vice versa. And I, I would like to emphasize how quickly under real industrial condition, you flip from oxidizing to reducing conditions. So this is something more and more interesting for companies. Uh, more recently, we're very much interested in propane dehydrogenation, very important reaction. Uh, state of the art catalyst, Julio Linish is working on, on that as well, is platinum thing. Uh, main problems deactivation, coking, and sintering, uh, confinement, also in zeolite, has been, um, has been achieved uh, by many others. We're working in understanding the role of anisotropy in specific zeolites, showing that the anisotropy and starting from platinum thin to uh, precursors, we were able to fully confine these uh, uh, clusters, at least uh, we, we, we observe only dimerization uh, if the um, anisotropy is very high. So we are reaching stability of this catalyst for six, and over, six months and over. 
I want also to emphasize how important is uh, a nanotechnological approach in biomass valorization. Um, why? Because we're starting from very complex molecules. We're talking about second, third generation biomasses, no, no competition between land for food and land for uh, biomass. Um, but you can easily obtain C5, C6 sugars that then can be transformed into useful biofuels, biochemicals. The problem here is the selectivity because you have highly functionalized molecules. And when you try to do catalysis really um, is hard to get um, a selective catalyst. Um, to make this story short and simple, um, if you start from not a complex pool of biomolecules, but just from HMF here on the left, and you want to do a hydro deoxygenation reaction to get the dimethylurane DMF here, uh, you discover that on a standard catalyst investigated by many researchers at that time, platinum and carbon, you get blue unwanted products, and then the reaction doesn't stop, you go further and you get also the unwanted red products. So selectivity is very, very poor. So we just decided to make bimetallic uh, nanocrystals, and we focused our attention of cobalt. Uh, why cobalt? Because it's not uh, active for hydrogenation. And so we, we make platinum, platinum rich in, or rich in cobalt, so platinum three, cobalt two, and platinum with uh, less uh, cobalt. So what the situation with standard catalyst, platinum and carbon, uh, nothing, nothing new. Um, we're working in flow conditions, so space velocity can be changed. You can see here conversion increase as you decrease the, uh, the space velocity, but of course, um, you go through a maximum in the production of DMF, either you form uh, lots of blue unwanted products or red unwanted products. If you use the platinum three cobalt two, you can see you can stop, fully stop the over hydrogenation reaction. So you increase the yield in the desired product. Still not perfect situation. But we can also work with the temperature, and indeed we succeeded at 160 to have high conversion, full conversion, and high selectivity, uh, nearly 99%. So we stop completely the formation of the unwanted byproducts. While if you have less cobalt, uh, you see, you still have poor selectivity. And why is that? you absolutely need to cover all the surface by cobalt. And this is peculiar reaction because cobalt is not active, but still you can activate hydrogen in the sublayer and still perform the hydro deoxygenation reaction. But if you have some patches of platinum exposed as proved by near ambient pressure, XPS, excess and different techniques, um, you have poor selectivity. Of course, cobalt has uh, ethical issues. Uh, um, stability is high. You can see much higher than a single platinum. Uh, I mentioned cobalt has ethical issue, but uh, after that, we replace cobalt by nickel, which may have some toxicity problem, zinc or copper. And in all cases, you have a high uh, selectivity and high yield. The last part of my talk is dedicated to more dreaming reaction, future reaction, and in particular water splitting. This is a very challenging reaction investigated for many decades. The, the real uh, difficult step is the four electron oxidation uh, process, uh, which involves water to oxygen evolution. And uh, to avoid this difficult step, um, Significant electron donors can be used to make the oxidation step easier. And uh, 
to prevent recombination of hydrogen and oxygen in these type of systems. Uh, but I'll try to show you that you can use this approach not to make hydrogen from water splitting, but you can combine organic synthesis in one step reaction. Of course, if you use titania, which many use, you have the problem of UV light uh, absorption, and you have to move to visible light. And I'll try to emphasize uh, this in, in a minute. Uh, but let's start from titania. This was a pioneer work uh, done in collaboration with Chris Murray, UPenn, uh, where we highlight how important it is to make well-defined nanocatalysts to understand uh, which are the uh, important uh, facet involved in specific reaction. The, the first talk, talks this morning was fantastic and I do not need to spend more time emphasizing that. And I'll mention that I'll focus on this brookite type um, PiO2 for um, hydrogen production. Uh, by playing with the synthesis and modulating the length of the nanorods of brookite, keeping constant the thickness and putting uh, co-catalyst standard platinum uh, with the same uh, well-defined nanotechnological approach, uh, we were able to demonstrate the, that the amount of hydrogen you're producing depends on the length of the nanorods. It means the anisotropy is playing an important role. And indeed, uh, fast transient absorption spectroscopy proved that increasing the anisotropy, you increase the lifetime of the whole photogenerated holes and electrons. Nano is also important because you can transform uh, an, an inactive material to an active material. And for instance, uh, if you are talking about uh, water splitting or photo reforming, um, titania uh, can work because it has the right conduction band position with respect to the proton to hydrogen redox potential, while tungsten oxide and iron oxide have low conduction bands position. Uh, but if you go nano, you can increase the conduction band position and indeed by making supported uh, um, polymers of iron oxide we were able to demonstrate that those materials are able to produce photocatalytically hydrogen you can see this is stable rates with time there is an induction period um, different polymers different uh, rates um, it's depend on the absorption of the significant agent on the surface of this material. The solar to fuel efficiency you can see here are very poor. So this is a proof of concept more than any um, possible uh, solution to the energy demand that we have today. And the same was for tanks and oxide. You can see bulk tanks and oxide is not able to produce photocatalytic hydrogen while this banded uh, uh, nano rods, uh, nano wires um, are able to make uh, hydrogen in quite efficient way. We are being also involved in seeing how per treatment of this type of material affect the performances. Black titania is known. Uh, we have been investigating brookite, which is much less uh, studied, and we we observe promotional effects. However, the promotional effects strongly depend on the significant agents. People do not pay enough attention to the end of the significant agents. They put methanol, ethanol, glycerol, claiming to be sustainable, but they look only at the hydrogen evolution. Um, this paper, recent paper, highlights how important it is to look at the end of the significant agent. The end can be also involved in uh, organic synthesis. For instance, you can use uh, ethanol, let's call bioethanol, let's say a water alcoholic solution. So you have uh, water and ethanol. 
you have a photocatalyst like uh, platinum support on the boron nitrogen doped titania nanoparticles, and you can do a synthesis, one step synthesis of benzimidazole by making from, um, from the alcohol hydrogen plus the aldehyde. The hydrogen can reduce uh, nitro groups to amino groups, and then you can have the reaction of the aldehyde uh, with the other products to make a different um, important uh, intermediates for pharmaceutical uh, synthesis. Nano is important also in the direction of making more and more sustainable fuels. And here is an example of what we did in collaboration with Dalian Institute of Chemical Physics, uh, where we try to make um, uh, diesel in a more sustainable way. So you can start from biomass. In this case, we use uh, methyl and dimethyl furanes, complex mixture obtained from biomass uh, processing. And by uh, a photocatalytic process, uh, which involves carbon-carbon coupling um, using um, ruthenium doped indium zinc sulfide photocatalyst, we were able to get hydrogen and what we call a diesel precursor that can be separated of uh, the unreacted uh, methyl and dimethyl furanes go back to the photoreactor. And then you can use the hydrogen you're producing to make hydrodeoxygenation reaction. That was the, the reaction I mentioned to you before to make diesel. And indeed, uh, with the catalyst we are designing, um, we were able to make dimers and trimers and oligomers with quite decent apparent quantum yield and, and a reasonable amount of hydrogen. And the, the beauty is that um, really you get a good quality of uh, diesel fuel with the right branch and linear ratio. Ruthenium is uh, inserted into the lattice of this material. It's quite stable. We have performed operando studies at the synchrotron I uh, use a high power laser to simulate long aging, and we observe very tiny deactivation due to some ruthenium going out from, from the, um, the, the material forming very small uh, ruthenium nanoparticles. We have a new generation of uh, photocatalysts that is well, performing much, much better now. Um, Another part uh, I want to uh, emphasize is how important it is to mixing material together. And we, 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 we love to uh, combine our core shell strategy with uh, different carbon nanostructures, different, um, different materials. And just to show you a third example, um, we, we use palladium and badly titania core shell material prepared in the same way as we did for uh, cerium dioxide. Um, and we, we were able to, to, to call, uh, locate this catalyst at different distance from the surface of nanotubes. Um, and we show how important it is to have the two component uh, connected and uh, talking each other to uh, minimize the over potential we have to apply in um, hydrogen evolution reaction. The same strategy, but a more, uh, let's say, complex material um, was, um, was um, used to investigate a CO2 to formate a reaction. And uh, in this case, the work was in inspired by a beautiful Jack's paper of, of Cannon from Stanford showing that palladium under specific condition of palladium on carbon was able to transform CO2 to formates. Uh, formic acid is an important uh, liquid uh, carrier for hydrogen. Um, and here we stabilize the palladium hydrides inside the uh, inorganic matrix. Uh, uh, preventing the sintering. And the process works nearly at equilibrium. So um, very challenging um, flow type of uh, reactor, because if you, 
if you work in batch, you form uh, formic acid, but you also decompose. The, the key step is the formation of palladium hydrides. And so uh, since cerium dioxide can form also palladium hydrides, we thought, why don't apply metal free uh, system? So just using cerium dioxide on, on uh, uh, carbon nanotubes, and indeed we succeeded to have quite decent amount of formic acid also in this way. Um, I mentioned sustainability. Yes, we use also palladium, platinum. So we have to move away from uh, high loaded metals. Uh, and the attention came to me on uh, carbon nitrites because of course it's made of abundant carbon and nitrogen. Uh, it's a very flexible material. Um, cheap, easy to be prepared. And we use it for a photocatalytic uh, uh, perfluorine fluoroalkylation reaction. Here is a first example. Uh, and depending on the treatment we apply on this standard material like amorphization, reduction, oxidation, but formation of different um, functionality on the surface, you can see that the yields in this specific reaction goes from 10 to 99%. Uh, percent. So the surface of this material is extremely important. And then you can see how many different reactions you can perform. These are important materials uh, for liquid um, crystal preparations for agricultural products, for pharmaceutical products and so on and so forth. Uh, the, the reaction mechanism is still under investigation. Uh, it's quite complex by uh, solid state NMR, by looking at different relaxation time uh, of uh, perfluorofluorinated um, probe molecules. Um, we proved that the important step is the coordination on the surface of the uh, perfluorinated iodine, um, the formation of radical species. And uh, we proved that uh, um, the amorphous material, the most active uh, material is that able to absorb more efficiently, to store more efficiently the um, uh, perfluorinated iodine. Um, between um, the, the many materials uh, which are under investigation in our lab without metal, I want to mention um, nitrogen doped uh, carbons uh, for electrochemical application. And the first example is the use of this uh, carbon nanoharms uh, with polydopamine uh, thermal treatments to induce the formation of uh, uh, nitrogen functionalized carbon nanoharms that has been shown to be very, very active in hydrogen peroxide uh, production. Very low over potential, very cheap materials. Um, of course, probably this is fancy starting material, but uh, we have been investigated different synthesis of this material even starting from uh, very cheap uh, components. In some cases, we use uh, some metal nanoparticles as templating to obtain um, peculiar structure. And just to show you um, last example, very recent, uh, we were make, able to make a, a small device connected to a solar panel and to produce 1% hydrogen peroxide in a very uh, simple way in flow, just using air and water and some electricity. Uh, last interest is on, on uh, plasmonic materials, uh, solar, thermal, chemical processes. Um, these are um, objects you can, can see. Um, there's not much to say, uh, just you can reach very high temperature, uh, 1000 Celsius degree, uh, you, you concentrate in, in a tower up to 1000 sun um, 
the only problem with this technology is the high cost of the mirror and large space you required. Uh, so we are interested in titanium nitride um, nano cavities. So starting from titanium nanotubes made by simply anodization, um, you, you can have uh, titanium nanotubes and those nano cavities can reach very high temperature. Uh, let's say 600, 700 Celsius, just with the, the light intensity of 10 sun. So the, 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 the step change is to increase really the temperature of these nano cavities at the level of uh, conventional catalysis. Uh, there are some problems with this material stability, but uh, you can protect the surface in some way. Uh, and then you can load a conventional uh, catalyst, uh, nano catalyst, and then you can perform different uh, reaction. Uh, saying that we have to look at the uh, composition of, uh, of uh, our catalyst, we have to reduce the content of noble metals. I have to mention that a way is also to recycle catalysts. So we have car converters containing grams of platinum palladium that are designed to be stable so it's difficult to extract them uh, we we have been working also on uh, alternative ways to re recover those metals and uh, reuse them for making more efficient catalysts like um, the process uh, also patents we have uh, on recovering palladium and of course working with nanomaterials is also important to underline um, aspect related to toxicology, nanotoxicology. So we are also involved in um, experiment of skin permeation of platinum, cerium, titanium nanoparticles, and so on and so forth. So this is important message for the young people. Um, perspective, um, I hope to have convinced you that it's important to manipulate material nanoscale level um, to, to make a uh, step change in the catalytic performances, uh, we have to reduce the amount of noble metal, precious metal, metal in general. Uh, and so my personal experience was starting from grams of metals to single and in some cases metal pre catalysis. Uh, I think we have to look at sustainability, future is uh, bright. Uh, I have to thank the member, young member of my, my group here, a small group, but uh, they're very motivated. I have to mention uh, Tiziano Montini, Michele Melchionna. Special thanks also to Matteo Carniello now in Stanford, Matteo Monai now in Utrecht, many others uh, who left, and financial support from European Union, uh, Ministero degli Affari Esteri e Cooperazione Internazionale. Many friends and collaborators among all, uh, Ray Gorty and Chris Murray, UPenn, Maurizio Prati, University of Trieste, Lucia Nasi, and thank you very much for your kind attention. Thanks, thanks a lot, Paolo, for this journey to a more sustainable world. So questions for Paolo? I can maybe. Hi, uh, Paolo. Many thanks for, for the inspiring talk. I'm particularly interested in this uh, palladium titanium dioxide um, catalyst or hybrid catalyst. Uh, have you, like, did you have the chance to control which, is the, which was the size of the porous? Uh, and also how the size of the pearls affected the, the efficiency of the CO2 to form a conversion? Yeah, that's uh, uh, the, 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 the most clever question, uh, porosity. I mentioned extremely important. Uh, uh, we're working with small molecules. Uh, so we, we, we typically do not have um, diffusional limitation. Uh, but if you work, for instance, with uh, VOC, degradation, you start seeing some problems. So uh, it's crucial to, to, to mention that porosity is uh, of paramount importance. I mentioned also how important is in the uh, propane dehydrogenation, the dimension of the port to avoid um, 
um, diffusion of the platinum thin cluster from inside making um, um, nanoparticles. Um, how to control? How to control is, is not, not trivial at all. So the thickness of the layer is controlled by the synthesis. The synthesis we are doing is uh, we use tiles uh, with carboxylic groups at the end. Uh, we use alkoxide, cerium, titanium, alkoxide. So they coordinate. So you, you, you cannot use much more than a certain amount of uh, alkoxide. So the layer remain quite small. Uh, how to control the porosity uh, is a try and error process. Uh, y y uh, a way is, for instance, to make um, hydrothermal treatment, uh, al alkothermal treatments. Uh, so you're boiling basically your material, uh, preventing, uh, oh well, uh, facilitating the elimination of the uh, of some of the, the solvent. Uh, calcination is another step. How you you, you treat your your material to eliminate the uh, the the protected layer of the tiles. Sulfur remains is another uh, important uh, aspect. So good question. Uh, lots of work uh, you have to try, um, and definitely uh, smaller better. Um, we we have work on on. Uh, methane partial oxidation with this type of catalyst. And I can tell you there is a difference between CO2, oxygen, diffusion rate. Uh, and, and so, yes, extremely important. So we have no uh, simple recipe to follow, but you have to try. I think I can continue the questions later, but thanks for, for the answer. Good, more questions? So I, yeah, I have maybe one small one. So you, so you said you go from like heavy load metals, right, to metal free, but in the middle it's like single atoms, right? Oh yes, I, I for sa safe uh, of time, I I skip that. We 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 have been working with um uh, gold, palladium, uh, copper, uh, supported for instance on chanographene uh, for organic synthesis for photocatalysis. Uh, Really, it's, it's hard to say that you, you, you get only a single atom. Um, it, it's difficult to be proved. Of course, we have lots of TM and showing that excess and so on. Um, uh, often you get a mixture of single atom systems. You never know which one is active. So in some way you have to leach out to the, um, what you, you, you're claiming to be not active. Um, stability is another issue. Of course, uh, you may make clusters and then reverse uh, back single atoms. So it's, it's, it's a challenge system. Uh, with copper, we, we have uh, observed the, the cooperative effect of copper one and copper two single atom catalysts in the same material. And chanographene is extremely um, interesting support that stabilizes, makes stronger bonds between uh, the, the single atom and, and the material. Uh, but yeah, we're working also on that. Yes, uh, thanks again for an inspiring talk. I was wondering, uh, also before you briefly mentioned it about the recycling of the catalyst or how to get back the elements for future catalysts. Do you know to what capacity that is like done today in catalysts and how resource intensive is that part of catalysis if you want to recover it? Uh, well, uh, I mentioned that I started with car converters. Those materials are really uh, challenging. There are lots of, of metal on, on those. It's strategic to recover because every year we are changing uh, car converters. There is lots of car converters. It's a very hard energy demanding process. You have to uh, dissolve. So acid, temperature, nasty conditions. Uh, and really there are not many able to recycle those. Um, as far as I know, I was involved with patent and companies. Uh, they were recovering, um, separating from the rest of the metallic part of the cars. Um, many are stored in mines before finding uh, a very efficient, low energy demand process. Uh, the patent we have is to, to work at 
80 degrees Celsius with an uh, oxidizing solvent. Um, it's fantastic for palladium. The, the only problem is that you don't know uh, on your car uh, what is the loading of palladium, platinum, and rhodium. For instance, you can come up that in your car you have only platinum. And if you apply our method, you do not extract anything. Uh, so there are technical uh, challenges. It's not that easy to extract platinum with our process. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's something we have to deal with. Um, other other spent uh, catalysts are much easier to be recovered. If you have platinum carbon, that's so easy to, 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 to cover the platinum and so on. But yeah. Good. So thanks, Paolo, again. Thank you. Have a nice talk.